Hello. Call for record. Whoa. Elders, it's Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to talk about solving inequalities. I know we did this a long time ago, but we're actually going to get to compound inequalities. That's where you actually have two inequalities put together. Okay, and we're going to quickly review that, you know, solving an inequality is just like solving an equation. My goal is to get x alone, add 2 to both sides. Okay, I'm going to get 3x is greater than 12. And I'm going to divide by 3. Now, look, I know some of you are smart enough to do this one in your head. I just picked a real softball type question to do. You still need to know the steps because there are some you can't do in your head. You can't go, oh, well, I won't worry about those. Those are going to be the ones I put on the test. Some of you haven't figured that out yet. All right. There's no equal sign here. So when I graph on my number line, I have an open circle, right? And then I need numbers greater than 4. Well, you know, I make my little test here. I pick a number greater than 4. Well, that'll be 5. 5 would be over here on the number line, so I'm going to shade towards 5. Right? Pretty simple stuff. I want you to remember that when I'm getting x alone, this stuff I would subtract 5 from each side. Right? I'm going to have negative 2x is going to be greater than or equal to 12. And then I will divide by negative 2 on both sides. And that will flip my inequality, right? When I multiply or divide by a negative, my inequality turns around. You should remember that. The point in interest is negative 6. You know, if you want to show a couple more numbers on here, that's good. But don't waste your time putting on like 15 numbers. It's a waste, it's a waste of time. All right, now I need a point at 6, but it is equal. It is equal, so I will color the point in, right, because it's equal. All right, now I'm going to do my little test. A number that is less than or equal to negative 6. Well, you know what? If you're not sure, pick a number that you know, like 10. Is 10 less than negative 6? No. So don't shade towards 10. 10 will be over here. I'm going to shade the opposite direction. Okay, that's if you're having trouble. Now, if you wanted to, you could put, you know, a number that you know makes it true. Oops, that's not supposed to be 16. Like, say, negative 10. Is that less than or equal to negative 6? Sure it is. And notice negative 10 would be about here, and my shading will hit it. Okay, when you have a compound inequality, it's an inequality in two parts. All it means is you're going to do both parts and put them on the same number line. So, let me do this first part. I'm going to add 1 to each side, okay, and I'm going to get 2x is less than 6. I'll divide by 2 on both sides, and I'll get x is less than 3. I'm not going to go to the number line yet. I will in a minute. On this one, I'm going to get subtract 3 from both sides, and I'll get 4x and that'll be greater than 16, and then I'll divide by 4, and we'll get x is greater than 4, right? Now I'm ready to go to my number line. Okay. I need the point 3 on here. I need the point 4 on here. Now let me take care of this. x is less than 3. Well, I need an open circle at 3. Blank is less than 3. Well, how about 2? So I'll shade towards 2, okay? Now on the blue one, I'll have x is greater than 4. An open point at 4, a number greater than 4, well, how about 5? And it's an or statement. So my solution, oops, my solution would be this part of it here. And then there's my graph of my number line right there. Whoa. Yikes. Okay. Now, by the way, ORs, unless they're a very special circumstance, like all real numbers, will always graph something like this. They'll have a gap in the middle. Okay. Now, there is a special circumstance where you could get, like, all real numbers. They could be colored in points, like so.
okay or they could be like one of each you know this and then the other one could be colored in but they'll always have that gap somewhere in the middle unless it's a special situation like all real numbers and then in that case the whole number line would be shaded when I have an and it's done very much the same way I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides and we'll get negative 2x is less than 0 and then I'll divide by negative 2 and when I divide by negative 2 x will be greater than 0 right okay so now I'm going to solve this other part I'm going to add 1 to both sides oops no that's okay I thought I made a silly mistake 3x is going to be less than or equal to oh wait a minute yeah this is okay I feel like I've made a mistake but I think I'm okay all right so and I'm gonna get x is less than or equal to 9 now this is an and statement here okay so this is my solution right but I do need to graph on a number line so let me get a number line going on here and I'm going to get 0 and then 9 right now x is greater than 0 uh, blank is greater than 0 well how about 2 it's an open circle and I'm going to shade this way right but and means both parts have to be true and x is less than 9 less than or equal to 9 8 I'm going to have a closed point and I'm going to shade this way and what's actually going to happen is here, let me do this oops I'm erasing my number line there sorry about that let me put that number line back in see if I can get it that's eh, pretty close watch this uh, this one would shade this way right and this one would shade this way did you notice that that middle portion of the graph is green because it includes solutions from the first part and from the second part well the actual best number line would look like this and this will be true almost always of ands the only time it won't be true is if there's no solution to it so I'm gonna have 0 and I'm gonna have 9 and in this case you know th this part can be different we have an open circle on this part will be closed but the graph will only look like this the solution is the part where both parts got graphed if you test it pick a number in between 0 and 9 and you plug it in for X into both inequalities they'll both come up true if you pick a number that's only in the blue region only one of the two inequalities will come become true if you pick a number that's only in the yellow region only one of the two inequalities will become true so this is actually the best graph I just tried to give you the visualization that the green one is going to go this way forever the blue one is going to go that way forever the part the, the solution we want is where they're they overlap each other because we need both parts to be true at the same time well that's going to be from any number greater than zero and less than or equal to nine so eight point nine 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 will work uh, zero will not work nine will work okay all right now sometimes our ands are going to look like this and these are the way I like to do them it's just a big inequality and I'm going to subtract 8 here right but I'm going to do it here um, so I'm going to subtract 8 here and also over here all right so when I do this I'm going to get negative 14 is less than or equal to 2x which is less than 12 well x is not alone so I'm going to divide by 2 now incidentally if I divide by negative 2 both of these inequalities would have flipped okay uh, and I'm going to get negative 7 is less than or equal to X which is less than 6 so I'm gonna make my number line I need to have a negative 7 on there I need to have a positive 6 on there I'm gonna have a, a closed circle here Right, a closed point, not a circle, a point, and six is going to be open. Now, again, if I do the the highlighting thing again, that's fine. 
Uh, maybe I should use a thinner highlighter. Let's see here. I'll make this part the blue one. So I need numbers greater than negative 7. Well, the numbers greater than negative 7 will be this way, right? Okay. But I also need numbers less than 6. Well, that's going to go from here, from here over. I'm having a hard time coloring. There we go. So the actual best looking number line, and you don't have to graph it twice. I'm just trying to give you a really good visual. The best looking number line would look like this. And we'll have an open circle and a closed. Oop, a closed. I said closed, but I didn't close it. And then I will shade everything in between. Any number equal to negative 7 or greater than negative 7, also less than 6, will make this compound inequality true. And I'll tell you what, just for the sake of proving it, I will do that. Uh, let me pick a number in this region. Let's pick a real easy number, like 0. All right, I'm going to have negative 6 less than or equal to 2 times 0 plus 8 which is less than 20. Negative 6 less than or equal to 8 is less than 20. Is that true? Sure. 8 is between negative 6 and 20, isn't it? If I pick a number outside of that shaded region, like maybe I put 10 in there. Okay, well, I'm going to get negative 6 is less than or equal to 2 times 10 plus 8. That's less than 20. So negative 6 is less than or equal to 28. Right, 2 times 10 is 20, plus 8, 28 is less than 20. This part of it is true. However, this part of it is not true, right? Because 28 is not less than 20. So you see the numbers outside the shaded region don't give me a true statement for both parts. Okay, one more example, and then we'll call it quits. Hold on a second. My music stopped, and I really like to hear music while I'm talking. Oh, I did that again. Okay, so let me see here. I've got this compound inequality. It's an and. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned ands will always look like this, where they're uh, kind of closing in on each other. And I'll show you a cool thing with your hands if you remind me after you watch this video. Okay, in here, i got to get x alone. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And then when I do that, I will get... 9 is greater than negative 3x, which is greater than negative 9. And then I will divide by negative 3. I'll do it here. I'll do it here. And I will do it here. And I'll get negative 3. Inside, I'll get just x. And here, I'll get positive 3. But the inequalities will change direction because I've divided by a negative. So... Going to a number line, I'll need to show negative 3. I'll need to show positive 3. They'll both be open circles in this case, open points. I keep saying circles. I'm sorry. And I'll shade everything in between. Okay, there you go. That's your video lesson. We'll get some practice with this the next day in class. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.